Paddy Power are offering money back as a free bet if the horse you back finishes second, third or fourth to the SP favourite in at least two races every day this month. Max £25 per race. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Welcome to this latest Racing Post weekend podcast looking ahead to a fantastic weekend of action. We haven't got sizing John, but any weekend when cue card races has to be a good weekend. I am Lee Mottisette. Maddie, you are? Yes, I'm Maddie Blair. She's I'm Maddie. Here. I'm not actually hosting for once, so it's a nice change again. It, it, it's a break for Maddie. It's a break <laughs> for Maddie. And also, Maddie's a fantastic tipster. So she will be giving you a ton of winners uh, over the course of the programme. As in Ireland will be our guru over there, Mr David Jennings. Hello, David. Hi, Lee. And Rob Catterson from our lovely sponsors, Paddy Powell. Hello, Rob. Hi, Lee. How are you? Good, good. Well done, guys. OK, so we will crack on with... The Betfair Chase. Um, first of all, before we, before we look at the ones that are running, just quickly, has Jessica Harrington made the right call by not running Sizing John? DJ? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, I, I'm not sure if the whole uh, Triple Crown idea was entirely hers. I think it was more Alan Potts. And uh, I think she kind of felt a little bit guilt-tripped into it, maybe a tiny bit. But I think she was happy enough to go along with it. And then... Like, if you think of it, three mile, one and a half furlongs on heavy ground mm. for a horse that had three hard races at the in last spring, it was a lot to ask, and it could have just ruined his season, I think. Yeah, potentially, mm. I suppose, yeah. Um, but we've still got a great race. Um, perhaps not a vintage Betfair chase now, but an interesting race. Yeah. Um, Maddie, Bristol to my head to the market. Yeah. When he won the Peter Marsh chase in with very similar conditions, albeit a bit shorter trip, he looked like the second coming. Mm. Would you expect that sort of performance again? I would, because I think these are his optimum conditions. But I'm actually going to go with cue card because they're his optimum conditions as well. Yeah. Um, on ratings, I mean, Bristol Demi is a great horse, but we have to remember he's still officially got six pounds to find yeah. um, off level weights here. And there's been this great retirement talk of cue card. I think he was going perfectly well when he fell in that Charlie Hall. Um, he always tends to come on from it for his first run anyway, even though we're confident that they had him spot on. I think this will be his Gold Cup. Um, and I, I just think at the prices, he's the one to be with. He's got the proven form. Bristol Demai has, as you say, these are his optimum conditions, but he has the tendency to just throw in a random stinker. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting. But I think at the prices now, Q Card, I think he should be favourite, really. Yeah, DJ, I'm, I'd be all over Q Card as well. Actually, before we go to you, DJ, Rob, how are you guys betting on it? Yeah, so we're 11 to 8 Bristol Demai. He was even favourite before Size and John was pulled out. We're 7 to 4 Q Card. 9 to 2 Outlander, 10 to 1 T for 2, 20 to 1 Traffic Blue Eden, Shantoff or Shantou Flowers, the outsider at 50s. Okay, Rob, while you're on a roll, how do you see the race? Um, like I was going through this last night, Bristol Demai, I think he's a, he's an awful price, even though he's probably got good Haydock for him, and, mm. and Haydock seems to be his track. Um, like everybody, I'm a big Q card fan, but you go through all of his form, and to me, he, there's, there's holes in pretty much every one of his runs since since he won the Melling back in 2016. Like, even the, the grade one he won in Ascot last season, it's as bad a grade one as I've ever seen. Like, he's beaten Sean Two Flyer. Like, there was six runners. I think a five finished. Like, it was an awful, awful race. Um, what about his bet for chase it, one year ago? That wasn't an awful race, was it? It was. It wasn't, but he beat Coney Gree, and Coney Gree was only coming back, and there's every chance to say Coney Gree badly was in need of that run. And He was like, still, look, look he was, he was back, still yeah. magnificent, Rob. He was still magnificent. No, it was, yeah. It, it, it was. I just, to me... There's been a couple of of signs that he, he is getting on. He's not the cue card of all. Now, he could prove me wrong. He was beaten in the Charlie Hall, of course, last season, and he came back and won. But I just think he looked in big trouble when he when he fell into Charlie Hall this season. Um, and, and I just think, as great as he is, and like we go back to the champion bumper when he won that all those years ago, it's sad to say, but I think I think his, his good days are behind him. And I'm going for Outlander pretty much by default. Um, he came back to win the last day. The word was they were hunting him beforehand, which they used to do with, with Don Poli. That can, can rejuvenate a horse. Um, he's a three-time grade one winner. By default, I think, I think Outlander's going to win this for Ireland. OK, he's, he's a bit inconsistent, did he, isn't he, Outlander? Uh, he is, yeah. It wouldn't be for me. No. Um, I, he, he's one of these ones that pops up when you least expect it. So the fact that Rob is expecting it means he'd probably run a shocker. <laughs> Good. Uh, he's... <laughs> He's a, yeah, I, 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 look, I'm going to go on a mini rant here. Um, I think the market is all wrong, and I think Rob is completely wrong. 
Good. Uh, Bristol, Bristol Demai, first of all, let's look at the facts, okay? He's ran in grade ones four times. He won the Silly Isles, which was a shocking race. Uh, he won, that was his only grade win, win, grade one win over fences. He beat As Demi. As Demi is, is very moderate. Then he was second to Black Hercules in the 2016 JLT. Turned out to be a pretty mediocre race. He was beaten 20 lengths into seven by Sizing John in last year's Gold Cup. And he was fifth beaten 25 lengths by T for two at Aintree. So there is four runs in grade ones and he's been found out. He was hammered by Native River in the Denman chase when he had no excuses on soft ground at Newbury, a track that he should have liked. And even if you go back to his two wins at Haydock in the Peter Marsh that day, only six of the 14 that started finished. He only carried 11-2. Um, I don't know. I think Bristol De Mai, for all that he's very good on heavy ground around Haydock, he has plenty to prove and the ratings tell you that. Look, cue card... Q card has won the race three times, and this is by far the worst Bedfair chase he's ever contested. Yeah. So he's won better better renewals of the race. He he was rated 176 when he won this race last year. Has he disimproved eight pounds since? I don't think he has. And if you go back through his form, every time he's had a fall, he's bounced back. Like when he when he fell uh, on a second start over fences at Cheltenham, he came back and he was just beaten by Bobsworth. When he fell in the 2016 Gold Cup, he came back and won an entry by nine lengths. He fell in the Gold Cup last year and he came back and I thought he ran a fairly respectable race when just beaten by T for two at Aintree. Um, I think this race is going to be his swan song. I think it's going to be the race that we'll remember him by. He's fine on heavy ground. He's brilliant around Haydock. I thought he was travelling and jumping fine uh, last time at Weatherby. Um, I think he should be favourite and I think he'll win a pretty poor renewal of the race. DJ, totally that, that, agree. Was, that was like a sort of Churchillian speech. Yeah. I really enjoyed it. <laughs> just before we leave this race... Just a debating point. In terms of the the, the jockey situation with Q card, Maddie, mm. I was speaking to um, a trainer white name recently who was saying that he thought it was a very good idea they changed jockeys. He felt that, that Paddy Brennan, excellent jockey though he is, he thought that Paddy had maybe been rushing the horse a little bit in his races and maybe not always making the right call mm -hmm. and that a young kid coming at it with a clean sheet of paper with no real pressure on his shoulders mm might really gel with the horse. How would you see that? Um, well, I said, I think, on uh, Monday's postcast or whenever I was last on, that I think Harry Cobden, first and foremost, is excellent. Yeah. Um, a jockey, um, just as a, as, a, as a jockey and, and what he does and how he rides his race, I think he's absolutely superb. Um, I think he'd give half the jockeys in the weighing room for a run for his money, despite his age. Mm. don't think it matters at all. How he conducts himself out of the saddle is excellent. I'm not sure. I don't think he's got no pressure coming into this. I think he will feel it a little bit, but he can obviously handle it. Um, and I think, yeah, that, that could be spot on. Um, I'm not sure if Paddy necessarily rushed in, but perhaps it's just time for a new person to step up and, and, and see how they get on. I, I can understand it perfectly reasonably. OK, Rob... Just, just a quick word, Lee, on, on Harry Cobden. Uh, yeah. If you're talking about a, a jockey going into a race with plenty of confidence, mm. six of his last... At the time of speaking, as we used to say, the time of writing, but at the time of speaking, six of his last 12 rides have won. And yeah. if anybody watches his ride on Flaming Charmer at Chepstow uh, the other day, um, a kind of a, a front runner that he got into an absolutely brilliant rhythm. He doesn't mm. panic. And he reminds me, like, he, he's not going to be this good, obviously. But the way he rides, he seems to model himself a little bit on Ruby mm. in that he doesn't, he's not like Paddy in that he doesn't always make a horse's mind up for him like Paddy sometimes does with Q card. He seems to let the horse kind of, get into a rhythm himself, which is something that Ruby is brilliant, brilliant at yeah. doing. And he seems to use his legs an awful lot more than he uses his arms. So I always think that's a good sign. So I'd have no no negative feelings towards Harry Copton at all. No, that makes One sense. quick thing to yeah. say, if, if we're talking about Harry Copton, good rides, he rode a horse called Mick Thonic, who is an absolutely dreadful jumper. The horse has no confidence. He's had a few heavy falls. He won on, won on him, I think it was at the April meeting at Cheltenham last year, and he was absolutely superb. Anyone who can get that horse to jump around the fences um, is brilliant. And the way he got him to win, I, I just think he's an absolute star. He's brilliant. Good. And Rob, you were horrible about Q car which is never on so i'm not going to ask your opinion on that one um, we, <laughs> we, we, go, anyway. we go on to the 150 at haydock two mile three handicap hurdle rob i can ask you on this one how do you bet yeah a few of the, the big ones don't run so we're five to two about Klein. it's nine to two limited reserve six to one el terramato value at risk and verney it's eight to one diamond fort and we're ten spar and which horse don't you want to be lame because you think it'll win 
Um, I was very taken with value with risk thrown behind, you know what I mean, Harry, a couple of uh, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Um, he's a horse, obviously, myself and Dave know from his from his earlier days. He, um, he won a great two at Ferry House, I think, after he, he left left Ireland. But there's no doubt about it. He's going to be, he's a better hurdler than he was to chasing. He just never took the fences. Um, and funnily enough, he's never really run on, on soft ground since he joined Dan Skell. So I think, I, I, as I said, I thought he ran really well against, you know what I mean, Harry. Top notch was back in third. And uh, I think value at risk has, has got a big, big pot in him. And I think he's, uh, I think he's the one for that race. OK, we'll probably try and whiz this one quite quickly. Maddie. Um, pick two, one of them was value at risk, but first, limited reserve, quite an obvious one. Second to Elgin at Ascot last time, who's obviously gone on to win the Great Wood. He's only been raised £2 for that, and James Bone takes £5 off. He's another excellent jockey. Um, he's won the only time he's raced on soft ground, mm -hmm. so that's pretty straightforward selection. And the other one was, like I say, value at risk. I think he ran a massive race behind, you know what I mean, Harry. He was getting a lot of weight, but he travelled the best of all of them. Um, he's always had a massive reputation, and these conditions are probably his optimum, so expect a big run now he's in slightly calmer waters okay david uh bizarrely lee i have no real opinion on the race the That's one fun. thing i will say the one thing i will say with value at risk um he's by far the most talented horse in the race and he's <clears> by far the best handicapped horse in the race but you just can't rely on him so it'd be a no bet race for me okay we're going to 225 david you gave us a wonderful piece of oratory on cue card there. Have you got a similar strong opinion about the change of the stays handicap hurdle from a fixed brush race to one of a conventional flights of hurdles? Uh, I can't, but the only thing I will say is, um, let me see exactly what date it was. From the, from the 14th of March 2017 to the 25th of November 2017 is a long time. And mm. I've been waiting on a, for a long time for a horse to run here. And I am absolutely thrilled that it's not a fixed brush race anymore because he's possibly the worst jumper of a fence I've seen in a long time. <laughs> Can I reveal my selection? Go on. Uh, it's Champers on Ice. Champers um, on Ice. Champers on Ice was my uh, my banker of the Cheltenham Festival last year in the Four Miler. And if anybody uh, got to see that um, embarrassing round of jumping from him, uh, he should have been ashamed of himself. But the thing is, this horse is extremely talented. And straight after the race, you probably won't believe me, and most people will think I made this up. But I remarked to a colleague in the press room in Cheltenham, I really hope they come back in six months' time for the Betfair fixed brush handicap hurdle because I think he'll take some beating once he goes back over hurdles. No, David Pike won stop it! I, yeah, I swear on my life, um, and which is which is not really swearing on a lot. But uh, no, 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 I no, think no, no, no. Uh, don't do yourself down. You're valuable. David Pipe won this race in 2010 with Grand Cru. He won it in 2011 with Dynast, and he won it in 2013 with Jean Vray Chambertin. Similar enough types. If you go back to uh, Champers Nice's run in the Albert Bartlett, he was beaten less than three lengths into third by, you know what I mean, Harry. Barters Hill was fourth. Galway Plate winner Balco de Flo was fifth. Batchison was behind. Shantou Village, West Approach. It was a pretty decent race. At the time, we didn't know how good it was because it turned into a, a war of attrition. But Champers and Ice cannot jump fences. He just can't. He's blinkered for the first time here. He's got deep ground on a flat track. He's been aimed at the race. And he's down to a mark of 143 over hurdles. I think his whole season revolves around this race. David Pipe, he's had three winners and three placed horses from his last 13 runners. Um, I think every t if, if this isn't the day for Champers and Ice, I would completely wash my hands of him. Well, but I'd be disappointed if he's... Well, I'll tell you what, as well, go, right going back to MC Pipe's days, when a pond house horse in a big race had headgear for the first time. Yes, yeah, well, blinkers for the first time. Generally yeah. a good sign. Um, Rob, what, what, what price will you be paying DJ out on, on Champers and Ice? <laughs> Well, he'd be paying me 12 to 1 because I took it earlier in the week. Oh, <laughs> 12 to 1. What is it now, Rob? Well, uh, he's 8 to 1 now, but uh, after uh, after what DJ said, he's probably he's probably already shortening in price. That was he's like 16s now. It's probably listening to Paul. <laughs> that's like listening to Paul Keeley. He's um, he sort of changed my view on the race. Um, yeah, he makes a great great case. I thought La Rocher down the bottom had a chance. Um, you go back to his uh, his novice hurdle form. He's got a he's got a a really good shout. He, he obviously had problems. He was on the, the sidelines for a while, but from his French days, he'll, he'll love this ground. He, you know, he's got really good form in France. And um, he's a half-runner to Holy Roy, who uh, has won a point-to-point -point over three miles and has won over hurdles over two, six. So this lad should stay. And um, he might be running for second now after what DJ said about Champers and Ice, but I think... Uh, down towards the bottom of the way to give him a good chance. There's good money for second anyway, Rob, so it he'll is. be all right. <laughs> yeah. 
Mardi, what do you think? Um, I like Noah Hasselhoff. I think he's around yeah. eight to one. He was placed in two Grade Twos last season. Mm -hmm. um, he ran really well. Sort of looked a bit of a shell of a horse. He maybe needed it on reappearance at Utoxter, but he still won really nicely, and he remains on a good mark. He's he's only five, as I say. He travels really well. Um, and he's twice a winner on soft ground. I think in this ground, I, I take David's point, <clears throat> and Champers on Ice is probably the most interesting of them, um, but I like to have a bit of a fitness edge just so, <laughs> so that's something that I can I can be happy that, you know, he's definitely going to run a good race. So no Hasselhoff for me, and I do think Temple Ross, I think he's about 16, so he's worth a mention. Connections are convinced he wants three miles in soft ground. Um, he's a, He has won on heavy ground. He was second in the Lanzarote and third in the big handicap at Aston at last year. I think he wants a more testing track. He's been chasing again, so he's going to be fit. And Nigel Twiston Davis can do no wrong at the moment. So Temple Ross may be to run on into a place behind probably Champers on Ice now that we've had that well, I mean, rendition yeah. from yeah, there's, 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 good money, there's good money for third as well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> You're very generous, David. You're very generous. Um, before we go to commercial break, guys, quickly, because we've got lots still to get through. The 335 at Haydock, the last ITV race on Saturday. Anyone got a strong view or a big tip? Uh, two again, sorry. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Bally, Bally Malin um, won on his debut at Worcester, beating Knight of Noir, who went on to win a decent race at Chepstow on his next start. The fourth, Monbeg Chalmers also won. Uh, Bally Malin struggled behind Black Court at Cheltenham last time, but that horse has obviously gone on and won since, beating West Approach and Co. I think he should prove better than 138. And Cloudy, too, he's an 11 year old now, but he saves his best for Haydock. He won the Peter Marsh off £7 higher last year. Yeah. He's fit from his run at Aintree. I think he could put up a bold show. OK, guys, anything from you for the 335 at Haydock? Yeah, I like the bottom horse, uh, Cataman the Soil. He, he loved this testing ground. He stays really well. He, he had a tough race in air 10 days ago when he when he just managed to win. But uh, Brian Hughes, he's two from two with Dr. Richard Newland this season. He's had 12 winners in the last two weeks, and this lad gets in off bottom weight. He's about 10s. I give him a big chance. Cataman the Soil. OK, DJ, any view on it? No, I spent too much time making my case for Champers and Ice Well, you did it beautifully. I enjoyed it greatly. And it takes into a commercial break. After the competition result, um, people now in suspense waiting for this one. The winner from Monday's postcast is Paul from Burton-on-Trent. We never say who, which, I mean, because there could be like three or four Pauls from Burton-on-Trent <laughs> enter this. Well, there are now three Pauls in Burton-on-Trent thinking, oh, yeah, and they're just going to be disappointed. So if you are the Paul from Burton-on-Trent, your account is now £25 uh, boosted with Paddy Power. There will be another chance to win 25 or €25 Euros on Monday's show. Next up, commercial break. <laughs> 